agree that uh, we are probably getting excited largely because of a very select few stocks which have done well and are therefore reflecting in the indices, whereas the broader market is not really at all time highs. Yeah, I think by and large uh, that analysis and uh, that inference would be true and that's clearly seen from just not divergence in sectoral performance, uh, but divergence in performance of various indices. So if you really look at the last one year, uh, the Sensex and the Nifty are up between 10 to 15 percent, whereas the mid cap and the small cap indices are down between 10 and 20 percent. Mm. So you're still seeing a huge divergence. Uh, the second thing is that the Sensex and the Nifty are at lifetime highs, uh, whereas the mid-cap index, the BSC mid-cap index, is still 40% off its all-time high. So the all-time high was 10,000 sometime in 2007, 2008, versus that it's at about 6,000. Mm. It's still off 25% from the highs two or three years back. Mm. So clearly, yes, I think this uh, bipolarization, this divergence, I think has only been accentuating with every passing week, every passing month, every passing quarter. And that is very clearly reflective of the fact that the, the rally has been driven by large institutions, primarily foreign institutions, and their inclination and their preference has been for the large cap stocks and the mega cap stocks, provided of course a lot of the basics are in place in terms of growth and cash flows. So I think that's clearly where the entire preference or inclination has kind of gone towards. So yes, I think it's been a period of stark polarization which we have witnessed. Doesn't that uh, also come with its own risk therefore that when uh, they do decide to book profits or move away then you could see significant fall as well because it's so concentrated. I fully agree with you. In fact, a huge risk. The entire market is dependent on uh, QE3 or the quantitative easing that is continuing there. Mm. Uh, the day we see tapering, uh, then if, if I start pulling the money, uh, I think there are no other investors left. In fact, historically, our market has had three legs. So we had uh, FIIs, then we had DIIs that comprise uh, mutual funds and insurance companies primarily, and also individual investors, that is, retail and HNI investors. So in the last three years, market has been running just on one leg, which is FIIs, and you know, FI sneeze, then the market yeah. freezes. So. Uh, that kind of a scenario is not healthy, and particularly for mark, you know, Indian economy, where our domestic savings are to the tune of 300 to 350 billion dollars per annum, and it's just 20, 25 billion dollars of FI money that is going to, uh, you know, determine the market's uh, fate. And uh, so there's a huge risk that whenever there's a tapering of quantitative easing or some global event uh, which calls for withdrawal of money from emerging markets like India, uh, then uh, incrementally our mutual funds, our insurance companies have no money. Retail investors have been decimated. HNIs have lost interest in uh, stock market. So, I mean, it's not a very healthy scenario.